there's no need to get tense. Relax, relax, condense. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. To help explain how electricity flows through a wire, the analogy of water flowing through a pipe is often used. I'm a bike rider, though, so I think of it more as a cyclist riding down the road. It's actually pretty simple. A bicycle rider has stored energy, which can be used to turn a bike wheel. A battery has stored energy, which can be used to turn on an electrical device such as a bulb. By applying pressure to pedals, which is measured in torque, there's potential for energy to be delivered through the chain. By applying pressure to electrons, which is measured in volts, there's potential for energy to be delivered through wires. The rate that a rider moves a specific amount of chain is measured in revolutions per minute, or RPM. The rate that a battery moves a specific amount of charge through wires is measured in amps. The combined power of torque and RPM to turn a wheel is measured in watts. The combined power of volts and amps to electrify a device, like a bulb, is also measured in watts. If a rider encounters a headwind on the ride, the same amount of power will no longer deliver the same amount of wheel speed. Wind resistance is measured as a coefficient of drag. If a battery encounters increased resistance when powering a bulb, the same amount of power will no longer deliver the same amount of brightness. Electrical resistance is measured in ohms and is represented by the omega symbol. If a rider is to move the wheel at the same rate with increased headwind as without, the pressure applied to the pedals needs to increase. This can only happen, though, if the rider has the required strength and stamina. If a battery is to power a bulb at the same brightness with increased resistance as without, the electrical pressure or volts needs to increase. This can only happen, though, if the power source can provide the necessary volts at the required amps. Just as math formulas can be used to analyze a bike rider's work, there are formulas to analyze electricity's work. A bike rider's watts, for example, equals torque times RPM. Electrical watts equals volts times amps. To calculate ohms, volts, and amps, we use Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that volts equals ohms times amps. So, 10 ohms and 10 amps equals 100 volts. The formula can be rearranged, stating that ohms equals volts divided by amps, or that amps equals volts divided by ohms. And since watts equals volts times amps, 100 volts at 10 amps equals 1,000 watts. To see how useful this can be, let's solve an electrical problem. This battery provides 9 volts. This bulb requires 6.3 volts at 0.15 amps, making it a 0.945 watt bulb. If we connect the 9 volt battery to the bulb, it will run too hot and blow. That's because the 0.15 amps drawn from the bulb at the battery's 9 volts produces 1.35 watts, and the bulb is only able to handle 0.945 watts at 6.3 volts. So if we want to use this battery with this bulb, we need to remove 2.7 volts and 0.405 watts. We can do this by adding a resistor. A resistor is an electrical component that creates resistance. And as we learned, resistance is measured in ohms. To calculate how many ohms of resistance is needed, we turn to Ohm's law, which again states that ohms equals volts divided by amps. So if we take the 2.7 volts we need to draw and divide it by the 0.15 amps the bulb draws, we find that we need to add 18 ohms of resistance. And that's just what an 18 ohm resistor does. So let's connect the battery and bulb now with the resistor in between. Perfect. And that's how Ohm's law solves problems. But wait a second, how do we know this is an 18 ohm resistor? Well, because the band says so. We'll learn more about them and more in the next video. To stay updated, please subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.